Considering Spyro the Dragon is considered one of Sony's two greatest mascots of all time alongside Crash Bandicoot, I of course had high hopes delving into the Dragon Realm. What I found instead was a stockpile of Dragon Dark filled with clunky controls and the soundtrack and not this gameplay and the shittiest excuses for bosses I have ever seen. Looking past all that, I saw a game that was pretty good. A game with truly near infinite potential, showcasing some interesting level and character designs and fun platforming. All it needed was more variety from a visual, gameplay, and musical aspect, and needed to take itself more seriously from a narrative standpoint, while still retaining the same charm that made the purple dragon and the world around him so endearing to begin with. Spyro 2 accomplishes this flawlessly, creating a Shakespearean oh, yeah. tale in comparison to Spyro 1's childish schoolyard bullying. We cut to the dragon realm where it's waning all the time. Welcome to Scotland, you fucking prick! So Spyro decides to head off to Dragon Shores to soak up a few rays. As he jumps through the portal, he is intercepted by Hunter the Cheetah, <laughs> Delora the Goat, I'm a fun, you dumbass, and the Professor. SpongeBob SquarePants. It's working! By the way, Tom Kenny voices like everyone in this game. Spyro is brought to their homeworld Avalar instead because they've been trying to bring a dragon to them. However, an evil sorcerer known as Ripto, uh, I don't know if you could tell, but uh, he hates dragons, has been wreaking havoc on the world of Avalar and Spyro has been dragged here to save the day once more. It's not fantastic stuff, but it puts Spyro 1 to shame, already showcasing more personality than much of the previous game with a truly obnoxious villain that you love to hate and likable antagonist right off the bat. Much like the Dragon Realm, the world of Avalar is split into hub areas. Three this time instead of six. Summer Forest, Autumn Plains, and Winter Tundra. Each of the homeworlds contains several portals to different levels, most of them your typical Spyro platforming challenges you've come to be familiar with, and of course some of them the returning goddamn speedway! Spyro was previously about collecting all the gems, retrieving dragon eggs, and freeing imprisoned dragons. While gems make their return, there are now talismans which you retrieve at the end of many levels for helping out the citizens who inhabit that homeworld, and you can also earn orbs from them for helping them out with various tasks or just by looking around the levels. Some of these tasks can be as simple as feeding a tiki fish, going on a treasure hunt for the professor's pencil, or enjoying yourself a peaceful and calming game of hockey. Like one spiral puck's right there for you. You got this. Get in there. No, come on, Spyro. Use your stubby little legs to get the get the puck. These mini games are perfect pace breakers found in just about every level. The worlds we travel to are host to more diverse environments than last time and are inhabited by unique NPCs. Whether they be turtles located on sunny beaches, cavemen residing in prehistoric wastelands, Eskimos populating icy glaciers, robots occupying a buzzing metropolis, etc. Not to mention each level you enter plays you a cutscene before the level showing you a bit about what Ripto has done to cause so much trouble. Did he just get crushed by an asteroid? Did he just get pushed into fucking lava? What is going on? And a new cutscene plays after showing how the good you've done has changed the world for the better. The All these details help take Spyro's worlds from being window dressing for a bucket list of tests to be completed to worlds of living, <laughs> and most of the time you stupid, <laughs> likable characters. Yeah. As well as adding tons of new minigames, Spyro can also perform brand new moves such as a hover at the end of his glide, and can be taught more to him for a like swimming, climbing, and head bashing by money bags that fat go back to Beverly Hills, you capitalist! Enemies no longer drop gems when killed, but now they're souls? Okay. If you collect a certain amount of them, a gate in the level will grant you different power-ups, which typically allow you to complete a test for more orbs, or access more paths for more gems, and all that fun jazz. Diversity is something Spyro's gameplay desperately needed to escape its endless, pointless monotony, so new moves and new minigames of course help make your overall gaming experience much more fun and meaningful, even if Spyro's turning is still sh- By the way, Counter, can I call you that, buddy? Yeah, uh, I've been using these moves already for like 20 minutes. How about you make yourself useful and tell me a bit about these bosses because I cannot believe these battles were made by the same flippin' company as last time. Imagine going from this to this. First up, we've got Crush, who runs from ring to ring, sending off shockwaves and fireballs. In between the time he spends running, you have to flame him, which will send him into a frenzy trying to swat you with his club. If you evade his attack, he'll whack the ground instead, causing boulders to fall from the ceiling and crush him. <laughs> Definitely the weakest of the three bosses in the game, but still good nonetheless. Gulp, however, 
Oh my god, I spent a good 15 minutes on this f***ing Triceratops equipped with laser. Pterodactyls will drop eggs from the sky filled with explosive barrels, bombs, homing rockets, and more, which you have to obviously use to take down gold. While you try to do that, you have to evade him running after you, trying to zap you, and even using your own firepower against you. He is a challenge that keeps you constantly on your feet, running away from him and racing from egg to egg, doing whatever you can to take him down. And after him, of course, follows the big baddie Ripto, who is also fantastic. You charge after orbs, which will grant you a unique superpower after collecting three of them. Using these powers, you attack Ripto until he's done. Oh my god, it's Mecha! Again, like the last battle, you have to race Gulp to the items dropping on the ground from above, pick them up, and fire them at Gulp. Thanks for actually making yourself useful, you stupid pro. Do this X amount of times, and Ripto's rampage is over. Oh my god, are you serious? As you soar into the sky, you take aim at Ripto's humongous birdie, until it and Ripto plunge into the lava below. At long last, Ripto's reign of tyranny has come to an end. No! No! What the f- So you've done it! You've collected all the gems and all the talismans and all the ore. Actually, no, for some reason that I will not complain about. You only need to get 8,000 of the 10,000 gems and 55 of the 64 orbs to access the kinda sorta bonus endgame area Dragon Shores. By the way, I didn't explain this at the beginning, but you need orbs to power the portal to Dragon Shores, so, uh... Yeah, that's why you're collecting them. Here there are several attractions such as laggy cannonball roller coasters with baby turtles tied down to the tracks, and tunnels of love that promote bestiality. After completing any one of the park's mini games, you'll be awarded a token. Once you get 10 tokens, you'll be allowed access to the Dragon Shores Theater, which is just a device used to replay all the storyline cutscenes you've seen so far. A bit disappointing considering I was hoping for a bonus cutscene, but at least it's not as disappointing as the 100% reward permanent super flame sure cool uh, I'm glad I decided not to go for 100% and I'm also glad I heard improvement in the soundtrack the soundtrack like last time is still great however while still a bit repetitive was able to find a bit more distinction because of the greater range of level settings All in all, I am amazed by how much of a leap in quality Spyro 2 took from Spyro 1. There is so much depth and personality to the NPCs, Party hits. our new antagonists, and our new villains. The worlds we travel from feel so much more alive thanks to their charming inhabitants and the cutscenes played prior to and preceding them. Innovative level design and new moves keep things far from being tedious like before, and I cannot stress enough that the boss battles are by far the biggest improvements made. Sure, I can nitpick the soundtrack still being a bit too much of the same and Spyro's turning being a wee bit, well, shit. But I'm gonna choose to look past that here because Spyro 2 is a goddamn gem and I am thrilled to see what Spyro 3 brings to the table. But first, let's take a look at the final installment of the Crash Bandicoot trilogy to see if Naughty Dog could put icing on the cake of their own phenomenal sequel. Ahoy, epic gamers. Thank you so much for checking out my Spyro 2 review. Check out the video to the left to see my in-depth thoughts on Spyro 1 and why it was... Meh. And click the playlist to the right to check out all my reviews I've made thus far. Stay tuned for my Crash Bandicoot 3 review coming up shortly? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, you know the drill. Okay, uh, bye. <laughs>